Hey everybody, it's Scott Dettweiler. I'm still here. So I've been traveling a lot the last few weeks, so obviously haven't had the live stream. I apologize for that. And it's uh, going to happen again here fairly soon, right after Easter. I'm gone for a good number of days there. I'm going to try and actually do some remote work though, and kind of show you what's going on in those situations. So one of those is I'm going to Shutterfest, and that's in St. Louis. And they've got between five and 7,000 people there, so I'm going to be doing some AI stuff there. Um, as well as some other classes. And then uh, I'm heading to Oklahoma and then Tulsa area. Uh, and then I'll be coming back home briefly. Uh, so I've got like Washington State. I'm all over the darn place. Uh, so I'm going to try and make that as, as least impactful on the channel as possible so we still get some videos out. Uh, but I want to focus on these live streams because this is a chance for me to play with new things and you know, just kind of relax and chill, you know, because obviously you do this for a living. Uh, you get kind of like, okay, well, another thing today. But I love what I do, but it's that I want to... I want to play with something creative, and that's what this stream is for. Uh, so today we're going to play with something weird. Uh, and it's not well, it's super weird, but it's very useful. Uh, so before we do that, I want to show you a couple of things I've been working on because I think they're they're also very interesting. And I have, I can't talk about it yet because I don't have it yet, but I have a new thing <laughs> that's going to be delivered that I bought that's going to be um, something for the patrons for the channel. Because right now there's not like a lot of difference between a channel patron and a channel sponsor. Um, other than the fact that you're you're paying more money every month and supporting the channel in a greater way, I want to pay back. So I've got a really cool idea on something I want to do, uh, but it's going to be one of those where you have to be a member when it's given. So it'll be kind of a, a cool thing for people who've stayed with me the whole time, even when I'm gone for a couple of weeks. And I really appreciate that. So I want to I want to pay you back for that. I want to give you something. So this is going to be kind of a cool idea, and it's going to be ongoing. Uh, so once I get this done, then you'll see what I'm talking about, and it'll be something you'll want. At least I hope you want. Uh, so it'll be kind of fun. Uh, so today I want to talk about a couple of projects I've been working on, just so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on in Scott's life. Um, although it's, it'll be pertinent to, you know, AI in general, as uh, I, most of my hobbies are tactile, meaning they're things that I like to touch. So painting, sculpting, making things in my laser cutters or whatever. Uh, so I want to continue with that. Um, but here's some things that I'm working on digitally that I thought you might find interesting. So we're going to zoom over to this. This is actually part of uh, one of the stable image services that I'm going to be kind of helping get going. Uh, so this is one that I think is useful. And, and what's interesting about the image services is that it gives us an opportunity to come up with ideas as a team and say, hey, what's something cool that you think would be that we could offer um, our API customers and so on that would be kind of fun. And this is one that I really love. And I wanted to show it to you because I think it's neat. And a lot of you be like, oh, I already know how to do that. Well, it's a lot more complicated than just comfy workflows, right? And that guy wanted to show this to you. Uh, so in this case, you just start with a, a sketch of a van uh, and then, oops, that's the wrong direction. This is another thing too. I've been playing with my uh, SLA printer. I was trying to make some little tiny um, uh, whiskey bottles because we went and did the bourbon tour at Angel's Envy when I was in Louisville and uh, I had a materials failure, but it almost worked. It was so close. So I'm still going to try and get that done. Anyway, so start with this and I was prompting different things. And now this is not your typical canny and depth control map. It's something a little bit more interesting, and uh, it was kind of fun. So I was playing with, you know, Tron, obviously things made of meat, which is just something I find funny. So I always put those in there, and I just went through and I did a ton of these. So this was kind of fun. This is SDXL, by the way. This is not SD3. Um, this is just regular SDL, SDXL. We, what we want to do is maintain uh, kind of the, the, the bleeding edge with these, and I want to make sure it works with what we're currently offering instead of what's right around the bend. Uh, so that's where this whole this whole thing kind of came in. But I wanted to show you this because I had a lot of fun with them, like a virus van. <laughs> I was playing with microscope. Um, and then underwater, I had a whole bunch of these made of rope or twine clown cars. I just had a lot of fun with it. And so I just wanted to share these with you because I thought it was neat. Um, kind of it's a little bit of a different stretch than just kind of doing the whole depth map, candy map, and so on. Um, kind of a neat idea. So once we kind of get this going and rolling, uh, I might talk a little bit more about on the channel about how it's done. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to give anything away because it's a trade secret. But uh, a lot of this stuff you could probably figure out, um, at least partially. Because again, it's a lot more, or well, not a lot more, but it is more than just a comfy workflow. Uh, so I did some Game of Thrones ones in here. I just I just thought it was fun. A wicker van. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, here's some that weren't so creepy. Because, <laughs> you know, all the stuff I make is a little special. So there we go. But I had fun with it, and I just wanted to show it. My favorite ones were at the end, though. Uh, although I do like these War of the Worlds ones, which I, I thought was really interesting. Um, so that was pretty nice. And then where's the ones at the end here? These were pretty cool. Little military ones. And then, of course, I got in the H.R. Geiger alien kick, which, you know, I absolutely love. Uh, so this is where I ended with it. But it was just kind of fun to play with. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, which I did not know was a thing, and I apologize to any of you in the channel who had this, is I did a, um, 
a video a few weeks ago where I took this noise and I turned it into anamorphic cheese woman, right? It was just a weird prompt I did. And I got this and I put this on Facebook and the number of people that freaked out was epic. Like so many people like, oh, it makes my skin crawl. I have tryptophobia or whatever, fear of holes. And I was like, that's a thing. I did not. Today I learned it's a thing. And apparently a lot of people have it. So there was like 30 people on the thing. Oh, I can't look at it. Makes me cry. Whatever. And I'm like, I live in Wisconsin. Like this woman would be, would be married already. <laughs> it was just kind of funny that this was like a thing. So I apologize for those of you who might be tripping up by this, but I thought it was a beautiful picture and I really still love it. I might actually print it. Like I really like it a lot, but the number of people who freaked out on it was pretty amazing. I was not prepared for that. Uh, obviously, I uh, want to mention today's sponsor. So Gigabyte is sponsoring the channel. Uh, so this is the uh, 17X laptop that well, we've been using for uh, some of the inference on the channel here to kind of drive things uh, because my video card and my bigger rig is just a 3080 and this has a 4080 in it. So uh, obviously a, a beast of a machine and it's pretty nice. And it's uh, it's nicer than my MSI was because the MSI, well, the big thing for me is the fans. Like, the amount of fan power that they both kick out is impressive, but I can't shut the MSI one down if I want to be in a meeting and it's quiet. The thing's hovering off the table like a hovercraft. This one you can put in meeting mode and it'll calm down. And that does cost a bit of performance, but overall, I've been a lot happier with this one than I was with the MSI. So huge thanks to Gigabyte for sponsoring the channel. Fantastic product. And again, one we use. Um, so I want to mention that. Now today, what we're going to do is we're going to play with uh, some so, an interesting kind of... Um, I'm going to call it something that should have been there from the beginning. And that's the ability to in-paint with a mask that is not all black and white or uh, binary type of mask. And for those of you who've been using you know, blurry masks or edges like that, you really have to have an in-paint model to do that. Uh, so this this uh, diffusion, um, diffusion methodology has come out or a little node that has come out that allows you to kind of do that. So I wanted to explore that today. I have not played with it a ton. Uh, so again, that's what this live stream is for, for me to trip over it and get errors and and watch and get flustered and we can all work together to try and get through it. Uh, so it's the official videos that I'll post as to when those are all shiny and I've got it figured out and I'm sharing it with you. This is just my, hey, I want to play with it too. Let's let's see what we can make with it kind of thing. Um, so this is the standard SDXL base workflow that you've seen me use a thousand times. And um, this is available on in the channel for sponsors, obviously, or you could just grab it. I mean, it's, it's nothing super special, but I start with it every time. And where am I? I'm looking for this thing. I just refresh the browser when it doesn't show up. Um, I am using the Python Go S um, pack, and that gives you the ability to load other workflows. So you can go and grab a quick workflow. If you've got something that you use constantly, this is a quick and easy way to kind of get to that. Uh, so I'm a really big fan of that one. Um, I have a lot of nodes installed right now, and it's not because I use all of them. It's because I install it, I use it, and I get lazy, and I don't remove it, um, which is a problem. You know, it's like I, I think a lot of us probably suffer from that. We have a thousand nodes in here. Um, I am still waiting for the day that somebody comes up with a node management system because there's so many of these things that are like, I'm sorry, dude, naming your, your whole thing O is frustrating. And you've got great nodes in here. But this makes me want to punch my monitor. Like, uh, oh, come, can we be a little more descriptive? So I would love it if someone come up with a node management system for Comfy. Like, that would be just, that would be great. Um, that would make me so happy. And then, of course, people are starting to use icons now. So pretty soon it's going to look like some sort of train wreck from the 80s um, because everyone's going to have icons all over the damn place. So please save us all before it goes super ugly. Um it is what it is. It's still a functional system. Remember, this is made to be a back end first and not a beautiful front end. And if you're thinking automatic 1111 is better because you like the front end, that's fine. Um, I don't want to deal with all the knobs and switches and buttons and rows and rows and rows of different values that I have to change. I'd rather just work with node to node. And I think most of you who are in this video today or, or working with me here today uh, feel the same way, right? Because we are just, we don't want to deal with it. Plus, we have more control. We don't know uh, what magic is happening behind the scenes in some of those situations. And if, if you've ever used both systems and you wonder why is the output different, there's so many things that it makes as assumptions on the automatic side that we have to set very specifically on the comfy side. And that could be frustrating. I get it. Uh, and I mean, what can you do other than compare apples to apples? Uh, so I can't remember the name of this. Uh, is it yeah, differential diffusion? 
Uh, so it's just called differential diffusion. It's just a node. It is part of the core of Comfy now. So if this doesn't show up for you, then you need to update your Comfy. As we start every single one of these streams, please update your Comfy and update all of your nodes. You have to ask two operations, right? One is you just click on the manager here. If you don't have the manager, go get it. It's, it's um, I mean, you just Google it. It'll be everywhere. You'll need to go get the this, and then you're going to do update Comfy UI, and then you're going to do update all, and you're going to restart, right? You have to restart. So if you can't find this node, it's because you didn't do one of those things. It's that simple. And if people are like, hey, I'm getting this error. I'm getting this error. You guys comment on those things. And I try and help where I can, but I am not the coder of these nodes. So if you're having trouble with one specific node and it's throwing an error, go to the Git repository for that node and ask the developer for help because they're the ones who wrote it. And maybe you've discovered a bug that a lot of other people are encountering. And rather than you just solving the problem and moving on, help the world, help the developer so they can update their code so that not everyone is getting that. Like there's a, there's a, there's one for talking to large language models, OpenAI specifically, but you can also talk to other local ones. If you have like Janda AI installed or, or stable services or anything along that lines. Um, the, the problem with that is, is that the developer kind of walked away from it for a couple months and I haven't been able to use any of those large language models because that's like, it was the best node. And now he has simply come back a couple of days ago and said, hey, I've been busy. I'm going to get back on this. I'm like, thank you, because I really loved all those ones we were doing when we're doing the uh, the live streams or say, what's the weirdest thing you ever found at a flea market? And we let it try and figure it out. And we get those like crazy, like the vampire hunting kit. Like I loved that one. We got all those crazy things. I can't do that right now because that node is broken. So please, I would love it if you would take some time and fix that little error. I think it was a formatting issue. I think OpenAI changed their API format to a new contract and he didn't update his nodes because he's been busy. So, I mean, I appreciate the fact that these people volunteer their time to make these things and always keep that in mind, right? That these people are not paid as is automatic 11, automatic 11, 11, not paid, right? That guy and his team are just doing this for the love of doing it. So I know a lot of people are like, when is automatic 11, 11 going to get back on this? Give the guy a break, right? He's working for free. He's doing it of his love for this as is a lot of the other node developers and comfy was as well. The comfy now works at stability with me. So obviously he's paid, but uh, he has a lot of other tasks other than just writing comfy, right? He's, he's a, a fantastic developer. Uh, so he's working on other stuff as well. So it's not just that he's doing just this. So, so I kind of keep that in mind, appreciate the people that are helping you out and that are keeping things running as well as stability itself, obviously giving you these models for free. Um, that's a huge thing, right? So anytime you can help stability out, you should do that, right? Or at least, you know, if you know me, as long as I've had this channel around, I have always bought credits on like Dream Studio. I still pay for Mid Journey. You know, I, I want to support the people who, that are helping support AI art. So that's my rant. Sorry, I went off on a little deep end there, but why? Why not? All right. So uh, let me get to the, um, let me look at some of the comments here. Sorry, I've been kind of ignoring. Good morning, everybody. Um, again, if you have trouble with depth nodes and things like that, I would, I would check with the developer. Um, Again, post it in Comfy. If, if anything, post it in Comfy's uh, Git repository and someone there will help you. Um, it's Mine's more of a channel dedicated to the use of it, not the development of it. So, um, And there's other channels uh, that are maybe better at that. So again, um, pick your poison as to the right tool there. Uh, explain the difference between Stable Cascade and Stable Diffusion 3 models. Um, so Stable Cascade uses three different models or three different yeah, we'll say call it three different models. You have an A, a B, and a C. And the, the, the difference is that we're at the end is when the C model is coming into play, which is when you're using three different uh, clip models to help guide things. And it's very small. So I think I think the one before it was Paella was only a 12 by 12. Uh, and now uh, Stable Cascade is a 24 by 24. That means that it's a lot easier to train. So if you're a person who's looking at this and you're like, oh, I really want to train my own lores and do different things like that. Mm -hmm. Stable Cascade is probably a way better tool because it's so much easier to train because it doesn't require as much memory as training, say, a 512 by 512 or, or even a 256 by 256. It's 42 times smaller. Uh, so worth playing with. Um, the other thing is, uh, so Stable Diffusion 3 does not use a unit. So that whole technology is out the window with Stable Diffusion 3. So with units, obviously all our LORAs are based on units, right? Our LICORAs, any type of system you use that is like that, that uses a unit, that's not going to work with Stable Diffusion 3. It's got a completely different way of doing things. And I don't have any knowledge that I can pass on about how you will train that. But 
Um, I obviously that's being taken into, into consideration, but just like all things that are research oriented, if we move the whole bar forward, right? We're like, okay, we want to invent a new thing. We're going to move this forward. We can't go, oh, uh, we can't do that because Jimmy only has four gig or video RAM. So let's just scrap the project. You know, unfortunately, we just have to move the bar forward and then people will quantize the model, help make it more efficient. I mean, it's really interesting to watch this thing evolve where somebody will roll out, will roll out a model. Why am I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking, I'm showing a screen and I'm not even like showing anything in the screen. I'm, I'm bitching at you directly. <laughs> if, if you are using... Um, these models and you'll notice that the day they're released and then like two days later, somebody's already got some great idea behind making it more efficient or more memory manageable. I think you're going to see the same thing with every model that we release. Same with Stable Diffusion 3. I'm sure some bright person is going to say, hey, I've got this great idea. And they'll just kind of run with it, quantize it and so on. So you see it with large language models. They'll come out with one that barely runs on a supercomputer. And the next day, someone's got it running on their phone, right? So just like all things, Give it a chance, let it get out there, but we have to move the bar forward. And Stable Diffusion 3 says, I have a better idea. I'm not going to use a unit. That means that all your lures and stuff probably aren't going to work right off the bat. Somebody somewhere is going to come up with a way to make those work if you have a big investment in it, or more than likely, there'll be a, a much better way to train versus using the unit. The unit's actually from the medical industry. So it's a, a an older technology that was brilliantly put into this type of you know imagery. So it's a a completely different kind of thing. And I think just give it a chance, let it get out the gate. And a lot of people were against SDXL when it first came out. It's like, oh, I can't run this on computer. It's horrible. I'm going to stick with 1.5. That's fine. That's right. But we can't not move the bar forward because it doesn't run on a few people's machines. Let's face it. We just have to run it on as big a machine as we can to move the science forward and then allow the precision and the optimization of that to follow. Otherwise, we're not going to get forward. We're not going to move forward. Anyway, sorry, I'm ranting this morning. My stomach doesn't feel very good, so I'm just kind of ranting. All right, let's do. Let's make some stuff. So, this uh, differential diffusion model here. Now, if you notice that in my my base model here, there's there's these gaps everywhere. In fact, this is missing here. Um, I do this so that I can actually pull and put in nodes like this. Like I do this with uh, LoRa's, I do this with with uh, control nets, where I'll just pull things out and do this. And this is really all you need to do. This now makes every model or every checkpoint into a um, in painting checkpoint. So now we don't have to have specific in painting uh, models for things. And this has been a significant issue with SDXL because I haven't enjoyed any of the in painting models. Like they just have not been fantastic. And the primary reason is, is that again, the, the masks need to be binary. They need to have that black and white. There's no such thing as a shade of gray for most of these nodes. They don't know how to use that. So this kind of opens up the door for that. Now, in order to use this properly, we have to re-encode our, our, our conditioning or change our conditioning for in-painting. Uh, so we would have, if we type in in-paint, you're going to see there's an in-paint model conditioning, right? And again, this is a core node in Comfy. So if you don't see it, it's because, again, you haven't updated. Or And this one's I think, has actually been around for quite a while. So um, everyone should see this. So what the idea here is, is that we're going to put this in place up here. And again, I haven't played with this too much, so let's trip over it together. <laughs> we'll make some mistakes. It'll be fun. But we have we have to put this in place, which you've already done. And that's pretty much the end of this. So I can just kind of leave that up here and, and leave it alone. I kind of want to pull draw attention to it, though. Uh, maybe we'll draw a different, make a different color. I will. Oops, I pinned it. That's nice. Um, I will give this to, uh, again, everybody who sponsors the channel um, will get this graph, whatever it happens to be, by the time we're done, and you folks will get that. So appreciate it. In fact, let's take a second here and acknowledge all the patrons here for helping me out and keeping things alive. I uh, appreciate you guys. In fact, this is an old one. Why is it the old one? This thing drives me nuts. Let's go get the newest patron copy thingy. Um because I, I update it right before I do this every every time. And for some reason, I don't know. Well, I'll have to figure it out. Um, OBS likes to, or uh, Slobs, Streamlabs OBS, likes to redo or put the old one in place. So I don't know what to tell you. But these are the fine folks who are keeping this, uh, keeping this channel going. And I really appreciate you folks. So thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Uh, so you'll get this graph when we're done. All right, so we got this in here and we've got uh, this in here. These are the only two steps that you need. Hey, Eric. 
I've got Eric Pete Gil uh, Glibsorian and uh, Gunter are all uh, supporting the channel, and you're in here. And B4Con, thank you very much, you guys. Appreciate it. All right, so we just need these two nodes. This is all you need are these two nodes here, and they work in tandem. So let's just color this one too. Let's make it uh, yellow. There's uh, these actually, I love this custom. Um, actually, let's make them black because black sticks out. But there's this custom one now um, that I think that's from a node suite. That's not uh, in the base suite, but uh, let's make these black because then they're stupid obvious, right? So we'll leave this one here and we'll put this in paint. We'll, we'll wander around with this in painting one. All right. Hey, Charles, thank you. Yes, I've been gone for a bit. Um, you know, here's a good question, though. So uh, Juan asks, what's the target um, difference here. So there, you notice we've got a target height and a target width for our clip models. It's because the clip model was trained at a 4096. So it doesn't really matter what the output is going to be. Um, they're trained at 4096. So the target is the size of the image we plan to make um, so that it will take and normalize that down to whatever the answer is. So that's the reason these are like this. If you ever wonder why that node is like this because that's what those are trained at. Um, now, sometimes we'll just use a regular conditioning and we don't really note that, but this does give a better result in my opinion. Uh, so when, where possible, we will try and use the um, SDXL ones if you're using S SDXL, uh, which we're using this Mohawk one, which I'm gonna change, I'm gonna use this to the base. So I am going to make sure that in here, I already have it in here, this uh, NSFW. So after my stream last week, I was I had a scare. I'm I'm testing the the uh, graph before I upload it for everybody for that supporting the channel, and I got this horrific nude out of it. And I was like, well, let's remember to put the not safe for work into this because that would have been a bad thing on YouTube. Let's throw nipples in here as well because we don't need that. So you have a G and an L here, uh, and you can make these the same. Most people will make them the same. So the G is the uh, linguistic positive, um, meaning more like your what, what you're talking about, what you're trying to make uh, from a positive mindset, and the L is more the artistic positive. So uh, the moods, the kind of what you're looking for uh, from an artistic mood standpoint, even uh, maybe even artists' names would go more in that than into the linguistic positive. Uh, so that's why there are two here. And there are, you see here for the positive prompt, I should probably just do this for the negative prompt as well. Let's just combine them because they're going to be the same thing. Um, I like horror in this as well. Um, I just think it's a pretty good um, mood. I mean, we, we think of it as math, right? We want anything that's horrible, we want to take and and take that that vector away from anything that would belong in that group. That makes perfect sense, right? So it, it kind of helps guide it. Don't think of it like it's terms. Think of it like a, like a concept. So let's put a negative of horror as a negative concept and uh, drive it that way. And then, of course, I'm using the same one here for the G and the L, which isn't ideal. I would probably want to separate these out. If, again, I'm trying to make this amazing work of art and I want to use the strengths of each of the clip models dependently or independently, then I would do it that way. But again, we're being lazy today. We're just, we just want to play with this diffusion model thing and Scott's rambling still and he won't get on with it. So let's fix that. I am going to get rid of this group um, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's thrown off my, my karma there. I'm just going to get rid of it. And uh, we're going to move forward. So let's come up with some prompts. I need some prompts from you guys here because uh, I don't want to use this one again, although I do really like this one. Um, and, and if we don't come up with something better, we'll just use this one. In fact, well, while we're waiting and you guys are coming up with prompts, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. And, and I'll read some of the things, uh, your comments here. Sorry, I'm trying to do eight things at once here. And as I said, my stomach is bothering me. So we're just working through it. I, I can't skip the live stream today. we got to do it because I've been gone for a couple of weeks. Stability is the best. Woohoo! Um, Hi, Scott. Excited to have you back. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Appreciate your, your sponsorship of the channel. And William, uh, same thing. Uh, glad you're back. Missed you last weekend. Yeah, I was gone. I was in uh, Vermont, actually. And then the weekend before that, I was in Orlando. So a lot of flying around. Um, so yeah, need we need a prompt from you guys. Uh, um, and why does that node have a width and height like the latent image has? Well, again, it's the same thing. It's it's the clip, the clip model. And we're going to use the height and width um, of the latent to drive. You're seeing we're driving the latent size as well as the size for our conditioning here. Again, SDXL allows conditioning to be sized. Um, so it's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more interesting. 
Uh, again, you don't have to use it. You can use whatever you want to use, but um, I'm sure this will change with SD with SD3. Um, I have not, uh, well, I can't really talk about that. So I'll just say that. <laughs> I can't really talk about that. Because it's different. It's a different beast. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I did put a link in the community area on YouTube here for the, the technical paper. So if you want to read the paper and understand why it doesn't have a unit and what they're doing instead, that's all all public information. But when we get to graphing, we'll take that we'll take that as soon as it comes out. You know it's going to be all over this channel, right? We're going to have big things on it. I think about doing a stable cascade one as well. Uh, a lot of people are are kind of blowing it off, like, oh, I'm so excited for SD3 stable cascade. Eh. We'll just we'll just wait for SD3. I will tell you that I think Stable Cascade is an amazing model, right? Or amazing group of models or family of models, the Versten models, um, named after their favorite food, right? So you've got paella before that, and then Versten now, which means sausage in German. Uh, the that that system is so easy to train compared to all these other things that you should not blow it off. It is a fantastic model. So as you're waiting for SD3 and you think, well, I don't want to make an invest investment in Cascade, you might like Cascade uh, a lot more than you think you will. So just saying. So let's let's play with this thing. So this in-paint model conditioning, what we want to do is we want to give it its own prompt, right? Because that's the idea behind this. Now, the, the negative... I'm going to go ahead and use the same negative because I don't need the in-painted part of this to have a separate negative, although I, I could, but um, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to worry about that. So for this prompt, I'm just going to duplicate this and we'll duplicate this and I'll plug these in the same way we had over there, uh, just so it's a thing like this. So now we need to have a positive prompt for our in-painted area and a positive prompt for the image in general. I will turn this on once we get to something that we like. Uh, right now, I think um, I want to get a prompt from you guys that we like better. But at the end of the day, I'm going to take this and we're going to run this through that case sampler anyway. Now, I'm using the impact pack because I like this pipe um, because it minimizes the number of lines we've got racing all over the place. I think it's just a lot easier to deal with. Um, so I like the pipe. The other one I have to say that I've really uh, taken a liking to is it's the bus um, from... Uh, this WAS node suite, which by the way, is another one of those suites. Every one of you should have this suite, the impact pack, the inspire pack and the WAS node suite. And, and there's a few others that I would also put in there. This pack has so many handy things in it, but this is nice because it's really obvious what's coming into and what's leaving it. So if you need to edit it, you know, you have your bus here, but if you have a new clip model, you just simply attach it here and it will be updated. So it's a little bit easier to understand, I think, than having a separate edit edit pipe that in inspire pack and, and impact pack have. All right. Let me catch up with the comments here. Uh, why does it know to have a width and height? Like the late notes. I already answered that one prompted dinosaur and using laptop. Uh, oh, come on. We can, we can, we can uh, put more creativity in there. Give me some zero shot stuff, right? Uh, so zero shots like that, that ultimate of it's not a thing that everyone's any seen or imagined, but now you're asking me to make it. That's a zero shot. And that's the test that you ultimately want to use to guide whether a model is decent or not is, is it a great zero shot? Um, and that's one of the things I think Dali blew everyone's mind with when it, not, not mini Dali, but, um, or a crayon, but when Dali came out, it did zero shot really well. Like that avocado chair was the one they always use. And it was like, that was really mind blowingly good. Um, I think that Dali now, um, in my opinion, is not as strong of a, of a model. I prefer mid journey and I prefer obviously any the stable diffusion models uh, over Dali. Dali is more technically correct. Like it follows the, the prompt really well, but I don't really like the art that comes out of it. It's just, again, personal opinion. It's, it's too um, realistic for me. I'm not, I'm not looking again to make photos of people that already exist. You can go to the beach and find real women. You don't need to make realistic pictures of women here because they're over there, right? They're real people. But <laughs> go there again. It's me ranting. All right. Um, what's how to get the hashtag in the upper right hand corner? Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. It's under manager here and it's under badge. And there's ID nickname. There's ID plus nickname, but it puts this weird little fox head over any any node that comes with comfy. That drives me absolutely batty. So you know, I wasn't offended by the you know, the girl full of cheese holes, but this one drives me nuts. Um, and then there's the nickname, which again, I also highly recommend. And this is probably my preference is just nickname with hide the built in. Uh, so if it comes from another suite, 
like the impact pack, you'll see it here. It'll say impact pack, but like this one doesn't have one. So you know that it's part of the core of company, right? Uh, so always keep that in mind. I should have it set this way. The reason I had the numbers is on the numbers on is because sometimes when it throws an error, it'll tell you the error of the node that it occurred in if it doesn't have the outline and you're like, what broke? That's a good idea. And uh, so I, I tend to use this one, uh, ID and nickname, because then I get the number as well as the name. So as the answer to that one, uh, you make a tutorial about training Cascade for subscribers. Yeah, we're going to be doing, I think we're going to be doing some Cascade because again, it seems like nobody on YouTube covered it or if they covered it, it was like, hey, here's Cascade. Let's wait for SD3. And I'm like, okay, I, I think it needs a lot more attention than that. It's just unfortunate timing that all this kind of cool stuff came out at once. Um, but what do you want to do? Do you want us to space things out or you just want to give them to you when they come out of the oven? Right? So it's just, uh, we're just called unfortunate timing. Um, what else we got here? Okay, so here's a prompt from a Glibsonian, Glibsonier, Glibsonoren. Glibsonoren, all right. Sorry. Let's do this one. Oh. It looks like it's in two parts because it was too long. And then let's discuss the prompt here. Okay. So a semi-realistic fantasy art. All right. So uh, my, this is just, again, my style of doing these things. And again, this is what I do a lot of um, is try and make the prompt as efficient as possible. Like I want to use as few tokens as possible because then if you use all 77 tokens, for example, it means each word is only weighing 177th of the total, which may not be optimal. Um, so let's, let's start over with the most important things first. Then I like to talk about the the details behind those most important things. And at the end, I put these things that guide the style. Um, presumably, the things closer to the front of the prompt actually weigh more. And they do, although it's slight. Um, I still want that to be that way. So let's move this to the end, right? Um, because we don't need the style up front. So let's start with young woman. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the word, use, remove the word young here. Just put woman. Uh, Vernant Hill above a busy metropolis. Okay. Dusk, flowing dress. So this is the woman is wearing a flowing dress. Um, dusk, windswept hair. Okay. I love that. So again, I'm, I'm describing, I, so I, I've already said it's going to be a woman. And we're going to change this a bit. So a woman wearing a flowing dress, um, windswept hair. Okay. So it's a woman. Um, and I want to say that I want to put her in position, right? Um, on a hill wearing a flowing dress, windswept hair. Okay. So let's just kind of, we got that done. We've described her roughly and roughly where she is. So kind of think of it like the model has to prove everything to you. If you say she's beautiful, it's probably going to be a headshot because if she's this big in the frame, is she beautiful? Well, you asked for beautiful. So now it has to zoom in to show it. Look, she's beautiful. She has green eyes. She's not this tall and has green eyes, right? You have to see her face to be green eyes. So avoid overly prompting for something when you know it has to say somewhat prove it to you. Uh, you're going to you're going to be hurting yourself. So, by the way, it, I, I'm, I'm going to say this because I'm not a person who says like and subscribe. But if, if you're watching this and you've liked this so far, please click the like button. It brings more people in. And obviously, I sit here and I rant more. <laughs> but it's the way of, of clapping, right? It's kind of like you're saying, okay, this is a good stream. I've got over 100 people watching, but we only have 30 likes. So, And then when we're done, by the way, there's going to be a whole slew of people that downvote these videos because they hate AI art. So you're helping kind of equalize the idiots in the world that think this is just going to be blown over, right? Just like computers and the internet. It's going to go away. So why worry about it? Anyway, woman on a hill. So woman on a hill. And that's really kind of the, the the goal behind how I make a prompt. Roughly describe what we got. We got a woman on a hill. All right, now let's talk about the woman, right? So she's wearing a flowing dress with winds. So she has windswept hair. And you could say what color she has. I say she has red, as I love redheads. I say she's red, windswept hair. Um, I love blondes too, though. Well, I like brunettes too. Oh, yeah, I guess I like them all. Uh, so verdant hill above a busy metropolis. Okay, that's so we've described her and we've described the hill. Okay. So dusk, and now we're getting into more things. Dusk, city lights below. Okay, and again, these are all good. Uh, soft glow horizon. Okay, but isn't dusk also kind of a soft glow on the horizon? So I think we could probably get rid of 
this part. And city lights, um, if she's above everything, I think that we can assume that the lights are going to be below. Uh, mysterious expression would be on the woman, right? So we could say hair with a mysterious expression. But now it's going to be a headshot because we can't see her expression if she's this tall. So I would probably, again, sacrifice this if we want the big picture and not the picture of her face with a hill, maybe a hill. I, I would I would probably go this way. We could try it just to kind of see because sometimes I'm surprised by it, right? Um, city lights looking towards the sky. So she's she's looking she's looking up. Let's use the word up is a lot fewer tokens, right? Vibrant colors. Okay, so this is more of the style now. So um, I'm just using carriage returns for organization reasons. Same with commas. It's just noise. It does not influence the model. I know people are like you have to use commas. I mean, early on, remember, everyone has like, you yeah, put two pipes between every word. Okay. <laughs> so vibrant colors, dreamy atmosphere. Uh, so this is an interesting one. Like, I, I'm very interested. So style of Charlie Bowater. Now, I would probably add another artist to this as well because I don't want one artist to feel like we're making their style. So I would throw another person in here. So give me another artist to throw in here. Actually, no, I'm just going to do, so we do uh, Seb McKinnon. So realistic, semi-realistic fantasy art. So well, this is also an artist, right? So it's the style of semi-realistic fantasy art. So in a lot of ways, this is another artist. So now we have three artists is the way I look at it. And I like my artists at the end like this. It's just my style is I like the art at the end. Doesn't mean that it's going to be so minimal. minimal. It's just helping to organize things. Plus, it doesn't weigh as much realistically. Woman on a hill. Right. So after all that, <laughs> can you make the damn picture? Yes, let's make this. Um, we want this to be probably a landscape. So this is the wrong direction. Uh, so we want it to be three over two. So we'll choose this. I think that'll work. And we're blocking our not safe for work because we don't want that surprise. And then, no, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to use Control B or Bypass is different than M, which is mute, which is what these are muted. Let's click it and see what happens to it. I'm going to catch up on comments here. What you guys are doing this. I want to suggest mermaid as a prompt, but virtually no models can handle it without giving them legs. Well, it, it can give them legs, but one of the things that I like to do is use the word mermaid and then say, I don't want any shells and then see if it can make boobs because I want to red test the model. It shouldn't show me boobs. If it shows me boobs, then we go back and say, that's a safety issue, right? And all the models now are much better at doing that. Like, I know you guys are like, oh, it's a safety thing. Uh, Think about it if you own the company and people are producing images that are, that don't fit with what you want out of your models. Would you be proud of that? So you can train it to do whatever you want to do, right? That's your, yeah, it's your prerogative. But we don't want something that comes out of here to make images that we don't feel are appropriate. And that's one of the things that you just have to deal with. It's it's part of the business being proud of what it offers. And, and people are like, oh, it's too safe. Safety is just a thing you're going to have to deal with. It's just part and parcel to running a business. Um, if you get sued because you create unsafe images and now suddenly you're not a business anymore, you guys would probably be a little sad. So I'd say just deal with the fact you can't make a mermaid without shells and expect boobs. She'll have her, she'll have splashes of water or no boobs. Who knows? But that was just a fun one that you saw the time. Um, uh, let's say stable can cascade can't do a dishwasher. You could create a, a dishwasher Laura and then put that up. <laughs> Maybe. Elf in a China Shop. See, that's a fun one. We should try that one next too. He says, easy to train at Cascade. Uh, why does Civit only have 10? Because, first of all, no one's kind of running to it or using it. They're all waiting for SD3 and biding their time. I think that's the primary reason. And I wouldn't use Civit as like the guide for everything. Um, but it is a very good element to show how popular things are. But again, it's, it's only been out, what? A week and a half or two weeks. Give it a minute. <laughs> um, what about those wire thingies? Is there a better way for it to be designed? Uh, like electronic PCB lanes. Don't like that means. You can do that. You can change the way that these in, in the manager here. Uh, is it the manager? I think it's actually up in the, the settings icon here. There's different ways to, to look at the graph as far as the wires go. Um, yeah, spline. Link render mode spline. There's linear. Um I think that's more like what you want or or straight. Um, there's straight. 
like this. Yeah, I can't do this because to me, I'm losing all, everything that's like that. I prefer the, the spline personally. Uh, because I'm used to Houdini and Blender and, and Substance Designer, which I used a lot, uh, that all use this wiggly thing. So I just get used to those. Um, when do we think we'll have access to SD3? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not in charge of the timeframes for things, um, unfortunately. Unfortunately. If I did know, I still couldn't tell you, but I don't know. So there you go. Uh, are there is there a setting somewhere you can display all? Yeah, we just did that one. Liked. Thank you for liking that. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate that. Uh, how did you guys avoid the, the night shaded image when training SD3? I do not know what that is. Um, I have no idea what that is with night shaded image. Probably don't want to know, right? <laughs> I appreciate your suggestion on prompts. Sure. Does SD3 have a new upscaler? SD3 is going to have a new everything, right? I mean, it's going to be, it's a new architecture. So uh, all the stuff that we've had before will have to go through a different type of mechanism. Um, and I, I guess as soon as it's released, all these people will swarm on it and you'll have a bunch of stuff within a couple of, of weeks probably. So give it a minute. It's not like this is a product that you go to Best Buy and I mean, who, who goes to Best Buy anymore and buys a box of software, right? You, I'm, I'm sure Diablo 2 is still there. You go and you buy your, your box of software. This changes every, what, two hours? So give it a minute and let stuff kind of settle first. Again, Cascade, brand new. Don't expect there to be an equal number of models for Cascade as there are for SD 1.5, which has been out for a year, over a year. Uh, just give it a minute. All right, so there we go. We have exactly the, the image that we thought we were going to have, or at least I thought we were going to have. We have a woman. We have this verdant hill. We have, um, it's even shined, but signed by someone. It's usually in the prompt, by the way, like whatever you say art by, it will try and use words to sign it because that's what artists do. They sign their work. It knows it signs their work. Uh, let's change the base model to um, one of the other ones that's a little bit better for painting. And again, I don't have a lot of models. Uh, a lot of people are like, wow, how many, you have so many, you don't have any models. I, I don't, I don't actually use a lot of models. Um, I'm that one person who, um, I use the base model more than anything else. I like our base models, actually. And I just want to make sure we're not safe for working here because I got that surprise and I was like, oh man, I'm so glad I wasn't online when that happened. All right. Yeah, I appreciate the keep keep the ideas coming here for, for notes and stuff. So I appreciate you guys joining me today. Again, it's just kind of me enjoying my Saturday and playing around and, and chatting with you. I wish this could be almost like a voice thing. You know, at some point YouTube will have it where I can hear you guys chatting in my ear and and wouldn't that be neat? It'd be like the next iteration of this. Uh, how do we get a preview from the case sampler? That's again in the manager. Uh, there is a up here preview method is set to, uh, I think it's none, which is very fast. And I'm using TASD slow. And that gives the preview here, which means I don't have to have as many preview nodes dragged around. Oh, so there we go. It's fine. It's got that semi-realistic fantasy art feel to it. Uh, we see that it's a, a verdant hill. And uh, red hair fl blowing in the breeze. Exactly what we really kind of wanted, right? Um, I think that worked pretty well. Um, in fact, just for fun, just just for fun, let's go grab the original prompt. Oh, look at that. We have Spinry has joined the channel. Well, thank you very much, Spinry. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard the crazy train. All right, so I'm going to use exactly, and I'm not going to pick on Glib here. Um, I like his prompt. It turned out beautiful, but I do want to, by the way, I'm going to save this image off. I don't think, yes, yeah, it's set to preview. Let's actually save it um, because then I want it back maybe. But let's run the prompt this way and see what it looks like. And maybe, maybe it's the same. Like maybe it's good enough. Actually it looks pretty decent. But it's uh, a lot more closer to the face because we did say that we wanted, uh, we had something in here about, um, where was it? Uh, mysterious expression. Yeah. So mysterious expression, we know is going to give more of a face. So that's actually pretty beautiful. So maybe, maybe I just overly complicated your life and gave you a bunch of information you didn't need because that looks pretty good. Let's run another one. And it's also the model. Obviously the model is very good um, at coming up with stuff, but uh, eliminating some things like lights below and stuff like that, I think would be pretty good. But you see, these are going to be closer, but maybe these are what you're looking for. But a uh, good prompt. And I'm glad we did that because that's actually very interesting. Um, all right. Let's see your prompt. Just got to while we're doing comfy tutorials. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that'll be horrible. Um, 
Uh, by the way, I made a node suite that uses ChatGPT, GPT Vision, and other LLMs to produce prompts and other text. Really? The plush suite? Okay. I'm going to go get it. Like, that's that. We're going to go get that. Thank you. That's awesome. Is it on the manager? Um, well, you took the time to make it. Let's take the time to go look at, at it. Uh, is it under glib by chance? There it is. Look at that. We're going to install this bad boy. So I'm going to play with this. I'm going to go. I'm going to actually write a note. Write meow. And after the stream, I'm going to go and play with it. Thank you. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you got lots of stars. If you like his project, by the way, you go give it a bunch of stars and, you know, take the time to click on it, open a browser window and go click on star, right? Give him some love. Thank you. Thank you for this. This is fantastic. And I love that you have documentation on here. Oftentimes I'll click on one of these things and it's like, it's got nothing. And I'm like, how are we supposed to use that? So, um, no, I'm not going to restart right now, but um, there you go. So I appreciate you using it. Well, there you go. Thanks, Glib, for putting that together. And thanks for sponsoring the channel. All right. So let's play with this in-painting thing. All right. Uh, first of all, let's just let's just start with the in-painting thing to begin with. So up here, this is the whole reason we're here today, right? I mean, we got off on the, all these weird tangents that Scott talks about because Scott's being chatty. Differential diffusion. Let's uh, unmute this or non-bypass this node. And let's non-bypass this prompt and this prompt. So, oops. Here, so let's put in here um, pizza. I'm just gonna put the word pizza. And what I wanna do is I wanna find her dress and replace it with pizza <laughs> because why not? Uh, so what I have here is we have the original K sampler and I'm gonna do is, um, I kind of regret using this pipe now because um, now we've got to deal with this. So let me, let me actually rip this apart real quick. Uh, let's put a regular K sampler in here. I'm going to use the case sampler like this, and we'll use just the model, positive, negative, and then the latent. Actually, what am I doing? Let's do this. Let's back up a bit here. Oh. I'm making a mess of my life suddenly. Let's do <laughs> Let's do this again. I want my case sampler back now because now I've, I've changed my mind on how I want to do this. I changed it in the middle of one I was talking about. And I'm looking for key sampler, and I'm looking for the one that does the pipe. And again, because this thing is not very organized, oh, key sampler, advanced, basic pipe. So there we go, basic pipe and our latent like this. And 20 steps Euler. I mean, I'm just going to use these because they're predictable and we know what we're going to get. All right, now let's take this and let's do another case sampler. Um, but we're going to use a regular uh, I want to use a regular case sampler and I'm going to take this, this basic pipe and I want to come from it, right? I want to turn it back into all its little bits. And then I can just use a regular case sampler here. Another one here and put the model in here. Now our positive is now going to come from this in paint conditioner here. Positive or negative in like this. So this will reset all these all these things to this, or at least it should. And then we're gonna do 20 steps on whatever this happens to be and then send it over here like we Now, what are we what are we doing here? We gotta drive this with something. So from the pixels, we wanna see the image that came out of this thing, right? So we're gonna to need to take this latent and decode it so we can see what it looks like and then jam that into here, right? Let me scoot this stuff over. I like a longer graph so I can follow the flow of things. I'm not like, I'm not these people like at all, you know, packed on top of each other and hide all the lines. That isn't what I want. I want to actually see all the things. Um, that way I can follow the flow. Again, personal preference, but that's how I do it. And I like to make my lines straight like this. That's just me. So I'm taking, and we're going to take, we need part of the image. What are we going to use is the mask. Let's go and let's use Clipseg. So Clipseg is a super easy, not super accurate, but super easy way to seg to segment a part of the image off. So we're just going to borrow the image again here, and then it generates a mask. It's that simple. It's so simple. Now, it's not the best mask in the world, but if we go only preview it, we can see what it looks like. And what are we looking for? Text here. We're just looking for a dress. That's it. I just want her dress. Now, it does have a blur, which is actually really nice because up until this point, you really couldn't use a blurred mask for most nodes. In fact, to get the best results, 
um, you would use a, um, what I'm looking for, bitwise. No, it's binary. A binary mask. Yeah, two binary mask. You would use this to take and eliminate all the blur off of a mask because you ended up with all kinds of weird artifacts and whatever. This was a very, very handy node. We don't need it now, right? Uh, so this should generate a mask of her dress and we're going to change it from her dress into pizza. <laughs> At least that's the plan. Let's see how that goes over. Uh, target height and target width. We still, again, we'll use these again here. This is actually the kind of area where I would use that anything everywhere or everywhere, anything node suite to all these lines for height and width that are everywhere. That's where I would use it. I don't want to use it for everything because again, I have trouble following the flow and I want to just be able to look at it and go, Oh, I see what you're doing instead of wait, where is that defined? That drives me nuts. Um, again, personal, personal preference uh, in place there. Well, there we go. Something like this. So again, we have our base, our base model up here. We didn't change our, our workflow here. At the bottom, we are saying we have another positive conditioning we'll use that has the word pizza in it, but we only want it to apply when it sees a dress. And I want to see what that mask looks like over here. We're going to take it into this in-paint model conditioning, again, which works in tandem with this, which is disconnected. Differential diffusion, which is pinned. It's driving me nuts. I'm trying to wiggle it and it isn't moving. And, oops. And then we're going to, again, take that from a basic pipe, rip the pipe apart so we can get some of the pieces from it. We need the VAE, especially the VAE, um, and throw that in here. In fact, again, these lines, because these lines are crossing, it's driving me a little wacky. I guess we'll do this. There. Now I still get a straight line out of it, so I'm happy. All right, let's try that and see what, see what breaks. There we go. I'm missing my VAE. That's easy. That's right here. Or right here, actually. Just because it looks nicer. Not like it matters. Cancel this and do it again. No one wants a partial win, right? And we're using this original prompt, by the way. As it turned out, I actually kind of like the original prompt better than the one that I fabricated. <laughs> but that's my mindset of when I'm building a prompt, if that's helpful. And you can see here's the mask that it created. And then it's going to take and... It turned her dress into pizza. <laughs> that's horrible. You know, I love it. We're keeping that one. Keeping that big, horrible mess of a dress. So save image. Yes. Mine forever. Uh, so it found the dress. And you can see what Clipsig is doing here is it's finding the dress. I think maybe this blur might be a, a bit aggressive. Let's just try two. Um, let's go with no dilation factor and see if we can get this a little bit better. And I'm going to actually take and change this from a random to a fixed um, so that we... And this, by the way, this is a really challenging one because that dress is everywhere. Um, might be easier to do something like a, a car or something. So here's the dress, and it's trying to turn it into pizza, which it is. There you go. Ta-da! <laughs> so even though SDXL is not an in-paint model right here, we are making... In, in painting with it and it looks really good i mean uh, i mean aside from whatever typical thing we get out of a model that's an issue that it did a nice job of i can't see a seam anywhere and it did a nice job i think uh, compared to our original image which is decent in fact we could run let's run a preview over here of it so we're, we have them next to each other because we're not really and this one actually i'm gonna change this one to a save um, because I keep forgetting to save these things off and it'll be a sad pen at the end of the day when I don't have a graph to give you guys. Again, this graph, for how amazing it is, will be available in the uh, sponsor area. Pizza sleeves, pizza something. Pizza sleeves, that'll be her nickname from now. Miss Pizza Sleeve. A big, big image, by the way, isn't it? I was thinking it was pretty small, but it's uh, size of this. But the saved image here next to it. Here we go. So we can use this segmentation method um, using just simple clip seg. Just very simple. Put in here the word of what you want to do and change it. Her hair. Let's change her hair. I'll spell the word hair. First of all, that's the biggest challenge. Spell the word hair. And let's give it a different prompt. Let's say she's blonde. Here now. 
I used the British spelling of blonde. Mm -hmm. So we have that all good. And again, the blur here helps with any parts that, that before we had, again, zero blur uh, most of the time. So this, I think, helps. So let's go ahead and end this and see what we get for a mask preview. There we go, just her hair. Pretty good. I have a little bit of artifacting in through here, but um, overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. That was pretty nice, and the ability to just kind of quickly do that like that. All right, let me catch up on comments here a little bit. Uh, didn't we could star those? Yeah, always star the the ones on GitHub that you like, and I think GitHub has the ability for you to actually use um, to actually donate to projects as well. I want to say I um, back when uh, HLKY did his thing before Automatic Eleven Eleven. I think I was giving to that project through there. Uh, he actually worked for stability for a while too. I don't know what happened to him or where he is these days. Uh, didn't know. I see. Um, glad not the only one using a notebook, <laughs> using as a notebook. Yeah, I, I have a, a deck of notes that I always just kind of scribble on and then throw them away. That way I know when I get them done, I keep everything neat and clean. Um, I should make a comfy Laura training nodes. Um, yeah, I, there are nodes out there for that, but I don't use them that way. It's just more efficient to just use the command line training, uh, in my opinion. Um, Undo by dragging your saved image back in. Yep. I should have. I just didn't. What's use of having uh, your mind if you can't change it? There you go. Is AI images art? Yep. Uh, maybe you should turn into, maybe you turn into flames. Oh, there you go. I love it. Let's do that. So her hair is now flames. Oh, it's flaming hair. Fire hair. Fire hair, flames. Let's do that. And let's give it more of a blur let's give it like um what's like a 10 pixel blur and we can even dilate the mask a little bit. so dilate would make it bigger without blurring it before it blurs it so we can dilate it a bit so we don't get those artifacts that were kind of hovering around the exterior here we just dilate it a little bit first now if we make it too blurry it means it's going to start to overwrite parts of her face if uh if it's too blurry so this is pretty good blur and we can kind of see go it starts at the brightest and works its way toward the darkest uh, which almost looks like it's 3D as it kind of rips into the image, which I think is really neat. Uh, so that didn't work out real well because uh, it truncated her forehead a bit and it did something wonky around her eyeball there. I think maybe we're too aggressive with our blur here a bit. Let's go back to two and try it again. Uh, Scott, your mindset on flowing clear noodle links is ideal for tutorials. YouTube makes it far easier for someone to follow. Yeah, I again, I'm I'm using my own workflows personally, so I want to be able to understand what I'm looking at. Looks like it, it's not the the mask is not fantastic here. So I think because fire is clear at the top, we're just not getting what we want out of it. Maybe that's the problem. Um, but anyway, we'll try a different prompt here in a second. We finished reading the comments here. Um, how to make her perfect hands. Uh, hands. I did actually did a workflow on hands not too long ago uh, where it'll go through, find the hands and correct them. And that works really well. Um, that's using a mesh uh, graph former. Um, we could add that module in here, that node in here. I've been saving those as templates. So I have these node templates. So I have a bunch of these in here that I've kind of created. And I don't remember if I have a hand one. I meant to, yeah, here it is. Hand, oh, and this is a different thing I was doing a long time ago. Uh, so I don't have that one saved, but I really should. That's a good idea. So if I have a workflow I really enjoy, I should put that mesh graph former at the end because it's really quick at fixing things like that. He's going to burn her. Looking for something more practical to make money in the fashion industry, something more realistic. Well, what do you mean in the fashion industry? Are you trying to make dr physical dresses? Because in that case, um, this is a great idea engine. This is an ideation method. Like I use this. I'm actually trying to make, uh, again, I like all my hobbies to be real. I'm working on a newspaper dress. I actually have a mannequin in my office. Um, I sometimes move around the house and make my wife scream because it'll be like in the shower suddenly. <laughs> uh, let's do the dress again here. Um, things like that. Oh, well, actually, we could do the uh, the city. I wonder if it'll find the city and allow the city will be on fire. Let's see what that what that happens. Um, again, this is not the most accurate method of segmentation, but it seems to work okay. Yeah, that didn't work out real well. Let's do. I'm gonna keep it to, to the dress here. Let's do the dress again. But uh, I'm using that. Stable Diffusion to give me ideas for the dresses, like how to make the sleeves more interesting. Things that I wouldn't have thought of, it's helping me with that. So, um, 
Yeah, this is interesting because it doesn't know how, how to make a dress out of fire. So it's a fail. But um, it's, it's a prompting fail, not a, a systematic fail. So let's come up with a different prompt. All right, what do you guys got going up here? Oh, and thanks for hanging out with me today again today. This is this is nice. I'm really happy um, that you guys showed up. And we have we have um, Spinnery who joined our ranks. Appreciate all the members who are showing up today too. You guys are awesome. And and a huge thanks to everyone who stuck with me for the couple weeks that I was gone because the travel I just can't avoid it. Um, it's it's one of the things that I've been doing for years. And uh, so I speak at a lot of photography conventions. I'm a I'm a fairly well known photographer, which. It's kind of an odd thing that I work for stability now, but that's what I was doing before this. And so I speak at a lot of conventions, but now I've converted from speaking about photography topics for the most part to speaking about how we use AI in our art for our photography clients. So it's actual practical use of making money using AI combined with photography, not in, in replacement of photography. So everyone is like, oh, how do you make a more realistic looking woman? You know, you take a picture of her. That's how you make a more realistic looking woman. And then if you wanted to say, put her on a volcano, then you use AI for that because we don't happen to have one in our studio or you don't want to buy stock art that's not yours, that this is yours. All right, a celestial, uh, a djinn or a samurai. I'm going to go with the genie part. I think this is more interesting. Highly detailed, hyper-realistic, intricate. Okay. Uh, so the word hyper-realistic, by the way, uh, is not... The same thing as realistic. Um, photorealistic is another really good example. Photorealistic is a style. It doesn't mean that it is more, it is not photorealistic. It is a style of photorealism that looks kind of real, but isn't real. And it has a fine line between being a photo and being a, a piece of art. So just note that this does not really do what you may think it does. Uh, we'll leave it in there, but just note that Hi uh, highly detailed and intricate are the same thing in my mind. Epic. I do like epic, but what about it? I usually do an epic scene. So like a big, like a battle scene or something like that. And usually I would try and put in here what I want. So what kind of epic scene? An epic battle scene, for example. Style of uh, Jean-Baptiste Mong or uh, I'm not familiar with. I'm going to, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to use, let's, let's use all three, right? All the time. And... And, and I love Tom Bagshaw's stuff. So uh, as a painter, I'm a big fan of Tom Bagshaw. So in general, fantastic artist. Um, so by mixing these artists together, now I don't feel weird about that I'm doing this. Now, hyper-realistic, does hyper-realistic counter any of this? Does hyper-realistic go against these three artists? Because if so, hyper-realistic is almost another artist in a lot of ways. So I would move it down, right? The word cinematic. Okay, that's good. Um, Let's do cinematic. I do. I like that word too. I don't spell in case you don't have, I haven't watched the channel before. I have severe dyslexia, so um, I do not spell. I can do math like a madman, but I cannot spell. Okay. That doesn't look like a genie to me, but we'll go with it. And there's no dress. That's going to be interesting. What's it going to do? Yeah, I didn't find one. Ta -da! Well, that's good. That worked out just fine. Pretty cool prompt, by the way. Like, I like that mix of artists. And I think that turned out nice. And this will be, this will be, who knows what that'll be. Yeah. So that's great. But let's, let's throw a, let's throw something in here. So let's do Dijin um, next to a um, car. Yeah. And then let's take and let's replace the car with um, something else. Um, milk. Uh, gallon of milk. Until I have something different, I'm just going to put that in there. And then over here, we're going to find the car and replace it with a gallon of milk. <laughs> this is how my brain works. Okay, here we go. I didn't know. I did. I thought a Dijin was a type of genie, not a lizard. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. I'm lost on something. Okay, it's a gallon of milk. Kind of. <laughs> but we can see that it worked. So now we can do, we can, we can kind of take and run with it. So instead of a gallon of milk, which is some stupid thing I put in there, well, let's give me something else here. Uh, a pony diffusion. No, we're not going to talk about pony diffusion. You go play with pony diffusion. If that's your bag, you just, you just go ahead and close the door in your bedroom and go play with pony diffusion. We're not going to talk about that. Here. 
All right, instead of a car, how about we do a um, dump truck? All right, a steamroller. Let's do a steamroller. Steamroller for all the people who think that AI isn't a thing that they're going to try and adopt in their lives. They're just going to blow it off because it'll go away. This will be a steamroller, right? You're either on it or you're in front of it. Put it. And this is fixed, so this won't change, right? It'll find that. And then, hey, look at that. Steamroller. Pretty good steamroller. Yeah. So you could see where this, this works. And I love how the simplicity of this. It's just this node in this node. And we don't need an in-painting node now because we'd have to replace it all the time. Um, it's not a genie. Okay, I sorry, I, I thought Dijin was an old world genie. But obviously, I'm I'm very wrong because I didn't know that. I mean, obviously the model knows what it is, but I don't. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's fun. All right, let's do one more prompt. Uh, and then we can uh, we can call it a good day. This has been fun. Like this is this has been really great. And I liked I liked the discussion around the prompting as well because it, there's some great ideas. But at the end, it didn't really matter because the prompt that you gave was better. Uh, but again, that's not the way my brain thinks. So it would have been interesting, uh, like try and argue with it. Um, trying to look through here. Are there any other stuff? I see he's gonna burn her. <laughs> Yeah, throw me another prompt here and we'll do one more. Um, I like, I've been liking watercolors and, and things along that line. It's just, it's been, again, my style is I like, I like to paint. So I want to make something that inspires my painting. And if it looks like it's a photo of a person, I'm, I'm not motivated to paint that, right? Um, so it's a different, different kind of universe. So yeah, if you guys have a gecko gene. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a gecko to me. It's, it, it is, it's not a lizard. Yeah, all right. So it's not just me then. Oh, let's get rid of the word celestial in front of it. Maybe the celestial design is from some sort of comic or something. No, it's definitely a it's definitely a lizard. <laughs> you know what though? It also might be the model. Um we are not using SDXL base right now. Is there a steamroller? So another thing to think about here, by the way, let's since we're since we're getting a little weird. Okay, here, here's another one. Good. Thank you. I appreciate you, Luke. Let's get a let's do one more. And I'm gonna we're gonna modify this one a bit and do do something a little weirder. All right. A so we don't need the word A in front of it. That's a token we don't have to have. So steampunk. Let's do a steampunk witch. I love steampunk witches. This makes sense. Steampunk witch. Uh, summoning a familiar spirit. Okay. Highly detailed, hyper realistic. Again, I wouldn't use this one. Intricate. Intricate's the same thing. Kind of sort of. Epic scene. Let's do uh, cinematic. Masterpiece. Okay, cinematic shot. That's the same idea. Style of Duncan and come back shot. There we go. And get rid of all the other stuff. Again, every time you put something in there that's just a um, um, a brace or a comma, it's just noise, right? But it is another token. So um, I try and minimize tokens when I don't need them. Like I, instead of using these this ands here, I can probably use commas. But I have noticed a difference sometimes when I use a comma instead of the word and. So I use ands when I'm talking about different artists. That's just personal. Okay, so we have a witch summoning a familiar spirit. So um, we'll put this back to... Um, um, we don't know what that's going to be. We'll just leave it as a steamroller and see what we get out of this. And we'll go from there. It's kind of playing diffusion after steam. <laughs> and that's all right. No one needs that in their life. <laughs> in my mind, nobody. All right. That's pretty decent. I like it. This is obviously not going to turn anything into anything. All right. It's beautiful. It looks very much like something I would expect from the juggernaut model. Um, it's beautiful. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. Um, is it motivate me? No, I mean it's okay. I do like it though. Like maybe this will be like the image for the uh, the the thumbnail for the the show because then people go, "Oh, look, they're they're not making pony diffusion." Let's watch that video. <laughs> so, uh, what's interesting here is let's turn off. Um, well, leave it on. But what I want to do is instead of using this clip seg, let's take and make a different thing. So this is obviously producing a black and white every time. But we have another thing that can make a black and white. We have a depth model, right? 
So we could take our depth. Let's use this depth anything. We could take this here and create a depth model this way. And uh, I would have to do, let's see, so we use convert uh, image to mask this way. And then we have our mask this way. So we can get rid of clip seg. So we're basically taking and using depth anything to create a depth mask and then converting that to a regular mask. So let's go see what this looks like, first of all. So it should look like a three dimensional, almost three dimensional version of this image. And now note the white, the whiter part of this is going to be the thing that is um, going to be aggressively changed. So it's going to change into a steamroller, I think, right? Because we didn't change the prompt. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. <laughs> we, we win the internet today. <laughs> we changed her into a steamroller. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So because the, the whiter part is going to be more aggressively changed than the blacker part, or is it the other way? Yeah, it's the, that, that way. Initially, I thought it was the other way around, so I kept having to flip, flip the mask. If you want to do that, by the way, it's invert mask here, and you just feed the mask in and out the other side comes the inverted version. In fact, we could do that. Um, maybe that makes more sense here because I like the woman. Let's invert the mask here. Oops. This way. So there, we invert the mask. And now she shouldn't change very much, but the background should turn into more of a steamroller scene, whatever that means. So. But it's close to her in a lot of ways, so it'll be kind of interesting. Yeah. Took her hat, edges of her hat, and turned it into a steamroller. So by using the depth map, we can guide where this is going to work instead of just using... Uh, you know, regular mask or painting a mask. I'm not a person who likes to go and actually paint a mask. Like a lot of people pull up the mask editor. If you want to do that, by the way, you can take any image that comes out that is, uh, do I even have it in here? I don't, I'm not loading an image in. If you have an image loader, then you can right click and choose ma edit mask editor. In fact, you can do that, I think in here, uh, or not in here, but in one of these. This one maybe. Uh, these being uh, edit, yeah, uh, open a mask editor here. Then you could go and you could scribble on this and save it to the node and it would use it as the mask. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take and paint over something every single time I want to make it. I want to use some sort of a segmentation method, either depth map or eclipse seg like we were using earlier, where I can say specifically what I want to replace. Um, I like that idea. In fact, let's go get, um, we were talking about the early, let's do this real quick. Let's go and get the output. Where are you? WI. Oh, I'm in too deep here. Why? I want the output. There. Always sorts it the wrong direction. Okay. I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back to where we were a minute ago, and uh, I want to change it. Just we're trying to change it a little bit more subtly here. But I have too many, I mean, 2,000 items in my folder, my output folder. I try and clean it and put it into subfolders, which makes it a lot faster. Uh, it's a dumb little tr uh, uh, trick, but if you have so many images in your output folder like I do, it just takes forever to things to load. Um, it drives me a little wacky. All right, so here we go. Let's go <laughs> grab Steamroller, this thing. This is where the Steamroller went horribly wrong. Uh, so let's go grab her, her hat. Uh, well, we've got this set to... Um, grab her hat and we'll change her hat into a, a baseball cap uh, or um, let's do steampunk baseball cap so we'll let the clip seg find her hat and change it into a baseball cap Not quite a baseball cap, is it? Oh, yeah, I guess it is. It was trying. It was trying. I think we'll have to generate a new one here. Let's go ahead and increment the seed and try. And when I reloaded it, I didn't get the same person I did before. It's a great, uh, well, she's huge, first of all. She's very, very large, very large. Lady. She has very tiny friends. Either Could be either one. 
So interestingly, it's only finding the one hat. Um, so if you are using a, a better clip method, like using actually segs that's built into this, um, it's probably easier to find uh, other hats. But yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. There you go. Well, that was fun. It was just something fun I wanted to show today as I was like, in painting has been so freaking painful without the in painting model. And oftentimes SDXL, I like the in painting models that are available are not great. And stability didn't make one. Uh, so we didn't offer one. So other people were making them and they were okay. Um, but they just didn't fit the bill. So what I would do is I convert it back to 1.5 in paint with 1.5, which has its own problems and then bring it back into SDXL and denoise it and upscale it. So I had a way around it, but it cost me loading two different models. Now they're done. Like this doesn't cost me anything. And I think it's really nice. Um, Stacy, the steamroller, <laughs> what model are you using? Uh, this is just Juggernaut, I think. Uh, yeah, Juggernaut V8. Um, I have uh, downloaded that one. I think someone suggested that one at the last live stream. Um, so I just grabbed it. Uh, you'd like to use the mask. You, uh, I would like to use a mask from a pre-generated image and use it with the initial conditioning, not at the first case sample. How do I do that with gray mask, mask image? Well, you do the exact same thing. You would just use your conditioning here uh, earlier in the process. You'd put it back before the first case sampler here. So it's the same idea. You just didn't, you just wouldn't use the first case sampler. You would, you would, or you would skip it and go right to the second one because you, if you're bringing in an initial image and a mask, which by the way, is probably a way more practical solution because if you're loading in something and you know what it is that you want to swap out, that's really more uh, of a, re a realistic solution than this, which is generating something and then changing the generated thing into something else. Uh, there's a, there's a V9. Yeah. You know, again, I use the base models for almost everything. And realistically, I haven't had a lot of time to do a lot of personal stuff uh, with SD3 on the way and Cascade that just came out. I have all kinds of stuff that I'm working on with those products uh, that I enjoy. So I haven't really been playing with it too much, but I'm still a fan of the base model. I'll just admit it. I think I made some beautiful stuff. There was a Reddit uh, stream not too long ago with like, what's your best SD 1.5 image using vanilla? And some of the pictures were terrible. And I was like, I made so many great pictures with SD 1.5 vanilla. And, and I was super happy with them. In fact, do I have any that I can show you? I have sorted this stuff so many times. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd have to go find it. Uh, I was just thinking about that, though, that that I've created all kinds of great stuff with 1.5 that didn't require a Laura, didn't require another model. It was a numbers game. You know, you throw 50 iterations at something, but it was really the prompt that drove how it worked. The better prompt produced just better imagery, which, I mean, makes sense at the end of the day. Um, in a lot of ways, prompting prompt engineering itself is almost uh, a bug, right? I mean, if I have to manipulate the words to get the image I want, shouldn't it just be what I want using my words. So prompt engineering itself, I think is going to continue to evolve uh, until the fact where it's almost not even a thing anymore. Like we just get what we want. And, and SD3 is very, very good at giving you what you want. Like Dali is a very, very good at giving you what you want, or at least the prompt and the image are in line. And I think SD3 is fantastic. And SD3 also is very good at text, which is something that I, it's not really my personal, like it doesn't really excite me, but I know there's a lot of people who are very excited about text. So I'm, I'm glad that it's there. Um, that's, that's awesome. But I'm, uh, it's, it's just great to see how quick this stuff is evolving and all the stuff that's coming out. So SD3 will be mind blowing. I guarantee you, you're all, you're all going to really love it, but just note that there's some major architectural changes with the way that it works. It's also bigger, right? It's bigger than uh, SDXL as far as parameters go, but it's about the same or less memory requirement for what I have seen. Again, who knows what the final version will look like, but it appears to be that it'll run on the same hardware, even maybe lesser hardware. Again, especially after it's released and people start to jump on it and quantize it and make it more efficient with loaders. It's probably running on a phone in a year, right? Uh, so it's kind of great to see this stuff. I love when I see games like Quake now that'll run on a watch or something like that. I'm like, check that out. Like, see how we're, where we have come. Um, SD 1.5 base was impossible to use. See, I disagree. I got all kinds of great images from SD 1.5, like all kinds of great images. So while we're, while we're chatting here, let me go find my, my, uh, Real quick, I'm going to find them because everyone doesn't believe me. Like SD 1.5 was fantastic. Yes, it did make some horrible things, but overall I loved it and I got great. Now they're not perfect, right? 
They're not perfect, but I didn't need perfect. At the time, I was blown away by the fact that this is even a thing. You can create an image from nothing? Like, isn't that just freaking amazing? So to me, maybe I just got, I got spoiled by the fact that, that this was, to me, next level. That this was even possible. Um, I know a lot of people join this later and they're like, well... You know, look at the things it can't do. And I'm remembering when I first made my the last selfie taken on Earth, which went pretty viral. Uh, that old guy kind of looking up in the burnt city behind him, and it couldn't draw a face at all. It was just a mid journey image, and uh, I was blown away by that. I'm like, the fact that I can make this from nothing was so impressive to me. Um, but you know, it's kind of like like people who uh, who didn't have cell phones growing up. Like I didn't have a cell phone growing up. That was uh, that was mind blowing to me that there was like. Can I have a cell phone? <laughs> All right, let me find some here. I have 475 in here that I love. Apparently, or I marked with five stars. I have some that are marked as awesome. Uh, All right, let me. I'll, I'm taking just a second here to find these. There are unfortunately boobs in some of these, so I've got to be careful. Um, but let me bring up. Find these here. Awesome. I have eight of them marked as awesome. Are any of these nudes? Uh, no. So these are these are all base 1.5 imagery. And they're not perfect, but I loved every single one of them for some reason. There was just something about it. So again, I'm an HP Lovecraft fan, so I really like the whole um almost like the dark kind of uh that whole like this this is a very storytelling almost like from uh, what's the book um Dagon, um, I, it wasn't by, by Lovecraft. He mentioned it as a city, but all of these are base 1.5. And I was just astounded by them. And again, you get the long neck, extra heads, things like that. But I would get every so often, I would just get something that is so close to perfect in my mind that I was really loving it. And I just, they're just great. And some of these I have since retouched. Like I think I've since retouched this one. So I'll drag it back in. Obviously the hands are screwed up and other, but these are base 1.5. No Laura's, nothing. It's just prompting. And uh, it's it's a combination of like six or seven different artists with different weights on them. So now I'm taking these and I'm re I'm revisiting them. I'm saying there's a there's a thing called the creative upscaler, which is a wouldn't it be would it be one of the services that's offered inside of uh, stable image services. And the creative upscaler will take an image and then you can put the amount of creativity you want behind it. So I kind of think of it like a denoiser, but it's got a lot more going on than that. So I can feed one of these in at, say, 20%, and it'll give me back pretty much the same image, but it'll fix a lot of things. So I'm really excited about that. That's probably one of the more fun things for me. But I have, I was about, let's just say, what was the number I said? 400 and something some odd images that to me are great images. They're not perfect. Those are really good to me. And that's those are all, again, 1.5. So for everyone who's like 1.5 couldn't produce great images, I completely disagree. Um, I was very happy with it. And again, it came from nothing. So to me, it was freaking magic. Right? It was neat to see that we can create something from nothing. So uh, fine tune models are good. Yeah, some are. Um, but remember that when you fine tune a model, you also can cause a massive uh, forgetfulness. So the model can forget things uh, that it would normally know. That's why lures are probably a better option than a full fine tune checkpoint. Because that checkpoint can be damaged in other ways that you may not be aware of. Like you get the same person every time versus, say, a variety of people, races and so on. So the Laura is safer from the I didn't overwrite my frozen checkpoint. Uh, so just be aware that there's a big difference between those. Uh, yeah, when it first came out, it is mind blowing. And still to this day, like when I speak, like again, I spoke in Vermont a couple of days ago, and only about three people in the room had played with anything. And usually Mid Journey, but only had Mid Journey because their kids had Discord and they had to try and figure out how to use it, which I get why they did it with Discord. I mean, you eliminate the whole need for security and all the other stuff that comes along with making a website and and uh, Discord has it already, but a lot of it's just not approachable by most, let's just say, most people who don't play games. They just don't use that kind of thing. But man, th some people were like astounded by it. And I'm like, I remember that feeling when, when I first made, I think I, I asked it who Hastur was. So Hastur is from a book called The King in Yellow. It's again another horror novel written about the 1800s. It's a very short story. If you haven't listened to it, a fantastic audiobook is out there somewhere. Only maybe, or it's an audio story, I should say. It's about maybe 15 minutes long. Um, I really loved it. And it gave a great interpretation. And this has been Journey version one or whatever. Blown away. And I'm still astounded by what we create these days. So 
I'm not again. I'm not a fan who cares about the 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 realism factor. I'm about the art factor. So I might be different than you, but at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> Dune now runs on a lawnmower. I just read that. One. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, it's whatever motivates you, um, and so on. So I just like the fact that we can create what we want to create. Uh, what's the best way to be able to sell an image and getting a commercial license? Well, again, if you are using uh, SDXL uh, or Grader, which obviously you're going to have Grader pretty soon, if you are a member of the stability uh, membership thing, then you can sell commercially for whatever you want. Midjourney also has a commercial license that you have to purchase if you want to be able to sell uh, an image commercially. And then um, right now, I'm a big fan of Wirestock. That's probably the place that I would go to do that. Um, they don't sponsor the channel or anything. Uh, but that's that's where I would probably lean for that. And we'll, we'll actually going to get into that uh, sooner than later here because I think I want to discuss that a bit more. Um, but yeah, so that's that's probably where I would go for that. Uh, you started more than a year ago. You know the feeling. Yeah, it's just awesome. Yeah, I just don't get the realism thing. I mean, so again, I'm a photographer and I work with mostly women. So it was not like, oh, hey, look, a real woman. I, I, I've, I've seen those. They, they make them, right? You can go to the beach and meet them. <laughs> or you can leave your house and they're out there, right? <laughs> Uh, why does the AD detailer and the, the mesh former don't detect the faces in the hands? Um, don't know. It might be your configuration for things. There's again, there's ask the developer, uh, post your workflow, give them all the information you can. Don't just give them a vagary and say, what? You give them all the information. They'll be able to say, oh, well, that's because you didn't do this or didn't do that. Whatever. Um, did a series of ladies and rabbit masks. Yeah, there's a term for that. There was a guy named uh, Draco Rubio on, on, um, um, Flickr, who I got to know pretty well, actually, over the years, fantastic photographer. And he did a whole series of <laughs> wearing his rabbit mask and like murdering people. It was wild photography. I and mean, the guy's a very kind of uh, a refreshing artist. We'll put it that way. But great photographer, great uh, Photoshop artist. So look up Draco Rubio on face on uh, Flickr. Um, he did a whole series wearing his rabbit mask and they're great. I really like them. Um, neat art. And that whole rabbit mask thing is a thing. There's like a name for it. I forget what it is. But, you know, it's just a thing. Um, we we are all inspired by different things that that are unique, right? I'm inspired by all the stuff I want to to build with my hands, like my my strange. I built a Mark V diver's helmet from foam. Um, I might show that off again. I, nobody's you guys haven't seen that in a while. Um, that's kind of different. Where I'm trying to make things with my hands, and and I'm inspired by by all this stuff. In fact, let me go grab the helmet real quick. You guys haven't seen that in a while. It's kind of cool. Be right back. Two seconds. So this was my COVID project. So I made this out of foam and it's just um, foam like you put under a weight bench. And uh, yeah, so I was going to wear it to the supermarket as PPE, but it never did. I probably should someday, but um, yeah, I just used body paint and painted on it and then used a brush and kind of made some gold. But so I like to make things that are, are tactile. And I thought about photographing this on somebody and then doing a big underwater scene. I just haven't done that, but um, I'm motivated by stuff like this. This, this is really fun to make. I'd never made a piece of what I guess is cosplay type of stuff aboard. But again, it was COVID. I didn't have anything else to do. And I want, I've always wanted a Mark V helmet as like something to have in my office as like decoration. And I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars for one. So I just, I just made it. I did 3d print the grading on the front because um, I'm too OCD to have one that will look like I made it like a kid made it. And then I actually, these are not real wing nuts and, and rivets either. I just cast these out of resin, a black resin. I bought one, made a mold and then, uh, cast them because they were like 40 cents a piece and then you needed like 120 of them or something. I'm like, I'm not going to spend like a lot of money on this. This thing probably cost me maybe 30 bucks total at the end of the day, but it was kind of fun, fun thing to do. A little experiment, something to get out of the way, <laughs> but you got to wait. Like I haven't, um, like I'm going to do video too on my Catan board. So the Catan board's gone now. Like I gave it to my daughter for Christmas. So I made a Catan board uh, from laser cut wood. And it was a great project. Again, I used stable diffusion to kind of give me ideas on, like, I didn't want a sheep tile for Catan. I wanted something that looked better. Um, I think uh, I have some of the rough pieces. I have a few of the rough pieces still laying around, but from when I was laser cutting them and doing different things with them and, but the board went away. I gave it to my daughter for Christmas. Um, but I have a new laser project. I have a new one. So we're going to do that. And again, it's going to be AI driven. So the idea here 
is that in the next few weeks, we're going to take AI art, but we're going to make physical art from it. So at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a physical thing you can give to somebody and say, I made this. And they'd be like, ooh, that's great. Instead of being, I made this with AI. And they'd be like, you're not a real artist. And then you get all that guff, right? But if you use AI as inspiration, that's the same as looking through a magazine or looking on um, uh, Pinterest or something like that. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Oh, bye, Laura. Nice. Nice. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got we've got all kinds of stuff that we want to do. And I'm going to make we're going to make some physical stuff with our AI art. So if you're going to get a little extra crafty and you want to get, you know, OK, we'll start with comfy. We'll work from there. Let's make some art. But then let's make art from that art. That's what I want to start to do. So Shivers Me, welcome to the channel. Oh, we got a new sponsor. That's two today. We're rocking it. Appreciate you guys. So again, this graph will be up in the, the community area on um, YouTube here. Um, I'm thinking about moving things to to Patreon, uh, to Patreon, I should say, but um, it's just a whole lot of work and picking things up and moving them. And I think we're okay here. Um, we'll, we'll see. Give me feedback. And, and I post in that community area every so often. Please click the like button on it so that I know you saw it. It doesn't influence it like this video. If you click like on the video here, that influences it. But if you click like over there, it means, it means I know you saw it. And with the number of members we have, I'm like, is anyone, is everyone seeing these? Is this the best, best way to communicate with you? Because YouTube doesn't give me any other methods. Like there's no way for me to send an email out or anything or like Patreon. That is a much better system for communication. So let me know. Let me know how I can help you better with that. Uh, but Starting uh, probably next month, uh, I'm going to have a monthly thing that will go to only to the uh, the uh, patrons for the channel, the patron level, because uh, we have the it's professional patron level, forget what it is. And then there's the sponsor and then there's the supporter because that, that difference in money between those, I'm like, I need to give you guys something. So I got this cool idea, cool idea. And hopefully it'll be collectible because once they're, they're gone for every month, they're, they're, they're not, I'm not making it anymore. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But I'm excited about it. I'm, you can tell I'm a little giddy, but I haven't made one yet. So it might be an epic fail. Like I'm, I'm probably going to start a fire. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but it'll be fun. But hey, thanks thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. This was really fun. This is a nice little Saturday. Um, I should start to have guests on the show too. That'd be nice. So I feel like I'm talking to somebody. So it's not like being talking to this camera. Like you guys are actually over here where camera's right here so it's a little awkward I should almost move i don't know how i would do that because i use a dslr as a webcam so it's a different thing but there you go so thanks for hanging out with me today guys have a fine saturday it's starting to warm up here in milwaukee so uh, we need one more or two more good freezes to get rid of all the bugs that are gonna uh, come because the winter was mild uh, so i'm not looking forward to that uh, but next month I will be in, well, in a couple of weeks, I'll be in Washington state. I won't be near Seattle. I'll be in the other side of the state, like the uh, Southeast corner of the state there. Then I will be in, um, what else we got? I've got Chicago, St. Louis. Uh, I was just in Miami, Orlando, and I have, um, missing a couple here. Uh, I'll have to look at my calendar, but I'll give you guys heads up on where I'm going and traveling. So if you want to catch a beer or something like that, Let's do it. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, go break some eggs. There we go. <laughs> well, everybody, thanks for hanging out with me again today. If you like the stream, please take a moment and click the like button. Uh, I really appreciate that. And again, this graph will go to everyone who's a sponsor level or greater for the channel. And you can access all the previous graphs and then the live streams too. Uh, those things, uh, we're going to obviously keep building on those. And again, thanks to Gigabyte for sponsoring the channel uh, and uh, giving us a 17X laptop to do all the inference that we're, we're doing as often as we can on here. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. Great, great product. And again, if you're looking for a machine uh, to move into that 4000 series NVIDIA series, that's a, a fantastic one. And I took it with me everywhere I went on these trips so you can get a chance to play with it and see it. If we get a chance to visit, uh, you guys can actually see the laptop. So